U.S.-China relations have been close for a while. They traded a lot, invested, shared technology, and swapped students, kind of like a new relationship. But now, China's true intentions are showing, and there's tension between the West and China. Europe's not sure about China's goals. Is the railway from Belgrade to Budapest, funded by China's BRI, a risky deal? What about China's investments in Hungary's car industry? Could that be a trap? And why are so many Chinese real estate companies buying UK property? We'll dig into these questions, but don't forget to subscribe because we have loads of info for you starting with Chinese investments in Europe first. So, China has been interested in the European car industry for a while. They've built factories and bought European car companies. For instance, Geely, a Chinese automobile company, now owns Volvo Cars, Lotus, and Proton. In 2023, Geely made a deal with a Hungarian car importer called Grand Automotive Central Europe, also known as GACE. They agreed that GACE would sell Geely's fancy electric car, Geometry C, in Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia through their dealers. The first Geely cars in these countries should hit the roads this year. Chinese businesses are making their way into European consumer markets too. They've put a lot of money into European consumer goods, buying brands like Tsingtao Brewery, Pirelli, and Club Med. In 2015, a group led by Fosun purchased Club Med for around $968 million. There were some rumors they might sell it to cut their debts, but they've denied that recently. Earlier this year, they sold part of their ownership in four industrial companies for almost $1 billion. Fosun is also expanding its Cook's Club lifestyle hotel brand in Europe. You'll also find it interesting that the Chinese are keen on technology, and Huawei is a big player. For instance, Huawei has put money into building 5G networks in Europe. Tencent got involved too and bought a piece of Spotify. According to Spotify's report for 2021, Tencent Holdings owns 16.6 million Spotify shares, which is about 8.7% of all the shares available. Meanwhile, the EU is thinking about making it mandatory for member countries not to use Huawei. Surprisingly, even though Brussels suggested not working with high-risk tech vendors, only a third of EU nations had actually banned Huawei from important parts of their 5G networks. China has also focused on building roads and railway lines in Europe, and their Belt and Road Initiative is all about that. Many people are skeptical about it, but it has made its way into Europe. Among the many projects, one big one is the high-speed train line between Belgrade and Budapest, and it's almost done. When it's finished, it will slash the time it takes to travel by rail between European capitals by more than half and bring three times as many passengers. Plus, it'll speed up the delivery of Chinese goods to the European market. When it comes to real estate, the Chinese are active in Europe too. Many might know that the real estate market in China is not doing well, and it seems like the housing bubble burst with the fall of Evergrande, a Chinese real estate company, last year. Despite this, Chinese investors are still looking to expand in Europe. For instance, you might be surprised to know how much China affects the UK economy. Since 2021, Chinese investment in UK residential property has shot up. About 15% of international property sales in the UK are above £1 million, and 20% of deals are above £10 million. This has been going on for a few years. In general, China is the biggest trade partner for Europe. According to the UK government's latest numbers, trade between the UK and China in the year ending March 2023 hit £107.5 billion. Also, China is the second largest foreign investor in Germany. In 2021, the total foreign investment from China in Germany added up to around $16.7 billion. China's presence in Italy, France, Spain, and beyond is noticeable, but the question is whether it's a good thing or a problem. For quite some time now, economists have found themselves on opposite sides of a fence, debating the merits of two economic approaches, economic liberalism and mercantilism. Those in favor of liberalism champion the concept of comparative advantage. They argue that China's investments have brought about significant changes in Europe's economic landscape. 
China has offered inexpensive exports, resulting in European consumers enjoying more affordable products over the years and, as a consequence, experiencing lower inflation, a win-win situation, some might say. Take, for instance, the types of goods that have been most heavily exported, machinery and vehicles, making up 52% of exports, followed by other manufactured goods, 19%, and chemicals, 16%. In 2022, the European Union imported primarily manufactured goods, 97%, with primary goods accounting for just 3% of imports. However, as with many situations, there's a darker side to China's increasing involvement in Europe. States often harbor hidden agendas, and China has leveraged its economic power to achieve a transition from economic influence to military might. Through its engagement with Europe, China has strengthened itself and, at times, resorted to bullying other nations. Take Lithuania, for example. On December 3, 2021, Lithuania reported that, in an escalation of a diplomatic disagreement concerning their relations with Taiwan, China ceased all imports from the Baltic state. China delisted Lithuania as a recognized country of origin, obstructing items from clearing customs and rejecting all import applications. In essence, this constitutes a form of economic coercion by China. It involves cultivating years of economic interdependence and, when interests collide, applying economic sanctions to exert pressure. China applied a similar strategy with Australia. The Australians were once China's largest trading partner, but when they called for an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19, China responded by stranding Australian ships and banning coal imports from the country. As a result, analysts warned that China might employ similar tactics with Europe if Europe refuses to comply with China, particularly in matters concerning Taiwan. The situation with Taiwan has caused problems between China and Europe. Taiwanese representatives visited Europe, which made China angry. In response, representatives from Germany, Lithuania, and the Czech Republic visited Taiwan, which made things worse. The issue is that China has put a lot of money into Europe. They've invested in things like airports, ports, cars, and technology. Europe now relies on China for many things, so it's hard for Europe to stand up to China when there are disagreements. There's also a problem with Chinese investments. For example, under the Belt and Road Initiative, Sri Lanka leased a port in its country to China for 99 years because Sri Lanka couldn't pay back the money they owed. This makes people worried about whether similar things could happen with Chinese projects in Europe. So, the situation is tricky. It involves money, politics, and concerns about who has the upper hand in these deals. To sum it up, China has become quite involved in European markets. While this has brought benefits like better trains and stuff, there's also a tricky side related to politics. With the COVID-19 situation and people saying Europe should make more of its own stuff, we're wondering if Europe will start doing things more on its own and not depend so much on China. If that happens, we're not sure how it will work out and what it might cost. The future is uncertain and Europe is trying to figure out how it wants to deal with China in the big world picture. If you like the video, do subscribe to the channel for more updates.